As gas prices continue to rise, so do the amount of people taking the light rail. Tonight, we're taking a look at the man who allegedly turned Amber Gardena's life upside down when the suspect came and grabbed her from behind. The Arizona housing market is seeing one of the largest declines in the country and showing you why one Valley woman has 6,000 reasons to thank a man she's never met before. It also means monumental change. I'm here live in downtown Phoenix at the Democratic headquarters. Crossing this intersection is where the 12 year old boy was struck by a vehicle. After a fatal shooting in this parking lot, police are warning people not to shop alone. That's right, tonight we're taking a look at the man who allegedly turned Amber Gardena's life upside down. For years, Amber Gardenas has been researching and trying to figure out exactly who the mystery man was responsible for destroying the past six years of her life. He has taken a lot away from me in different, different areas. The man uses his real name, Ruben Santiago. But six years ago, he allegedly stole and began using Amber's social security number. He used her number to obtain credit cards, turn on utilities, and purchase multiple homes. In fact, Three on Your Side discovered Santiago bought this $315,000 home in Peoria and obtained the mortgage by reportedly using Amber's social security number. He has four houses in his name. He has $800,000 in credit in, in his name, in, in my social security number. $800,000. Amber says she can't even get credit anymore because Ruben always gets there before she does. Everywhere I've gone, to get a credit, he's there. He's been there. And I get denied. But after Three on Your Side got involved, the wheels of justice started turning for Amber. The Maricopa County Sheriff's Office launched an investigation into the so-called mystery man and discovered he's 33-year-old Ruben Santiago, who crossed over to the United States illegally from Mexico. Amber says she got the news recently from a Maricopa County uh, Sheriff's you know, detective maybe, maybe, who told her this. This is the Sheriff's Office. I have some good news for you. And that good news? Well, not only did the sheriff's office find out who Ruben Santiago really was, but they also arrested him. When I got the phone call from the detective was two weeks ago, I was very, very happy. I felt very, very relieved. According to a sheriff's report obtained by Three on Your Side, Ruben Santiago confessed to using Amber's personal information, but claimed he needed it because he wanted to work. He reportedly told the detective he purchased Amber's social security number off the streets for $80. And according to this report right here, Ruben Santiago later used Amber's social security number to open up credit and purchase homes, including this $275,000 Sun City home, the place that police ultimately arrested Ruben Santiago. And now I'm able to put, you know, my get my life back together. Amber credits the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office for bringing down the man who wrecked her life for years. She also credits Three on Your Side for helping to get the ball rolling. And thanks to Three on Your Side, they were able to get the ball running and he was caught and he was he is now in jail. Tonight, Ruben Santiago remains in jail. He's being held on 35 felony counts related to identity theft. Tonight, we're talking about a good deed and showing you why one Valley woman has 6,000 reasons to thank a man she's never met before. Hello. Hi. Hi. You're Dorothy? Yes, are you Gibby? Yes, I'm Gibby. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> my glad to meet you. Craig Giblin, who goes by Gibby and Dorothy Block, have never met before. I'm so glad to meet you. Oh, it's my yeah. pleasure. And although they don't know each other, it's unlikely they'll ever forget one another. Well, our paths never crossed until now. Their two paths crossed here, just outside this grocery store parking lot in Chandler. Um, it was a typical day. I just went to the grocery store. Well, Gibby's typical day was about to change when he walked out of the store and spotted something. As Gibby was driving out of this grocery store parking lot, he looked down and saw a wallet. When he opened it up, he noticed an envelope with a wad full of cash. And to my surprise, there was a pack of money, probably about uh, three quarters of an inch thick. So I knew there was a lot of cash in it. There was a lot of cash, all right. Gibby says he realized whoever dropped the wallet with all that money must have just withdrawn all of it from the bank found inside the grocery store. 
So Gibby says he walked the wallet and the cash back inside and went to the bank teller. I found this. I'm assuming this is a wad, you know a large wad of cash and. He looked at the name and he said, oh my gosh, that's Dorothy. She was just here not less than 40 minutes ago and withdrew $6,000. Yup, $6,000. Money Dorothy had withdrawn at the bank but accidentally dropped when she was in the parking lot. Dorothy says the $6,000 was basically her life savings. Well, I worked 15 years at Dillard's and I retired at 81 and I would put a little bit of money away until I had a little bit saved for my retirement. Dorothy says she didn't even realize she had dropped the money until the bank called her. My heart went down to my knees and I thought, oh my gosh, I thank the Lord for an honest person. And even the bank's manager says he couldn't believe what had just happened. My reaction turned to shock and relief. Shock that someone would be so honest and relief knowing that this would end up well for our customer. And even though all $6,000 was returned to Dorothy, she never did get a chance to meet and thank the person who found it until we brought the two of them together. I was glad to meet him. I've been wanting to meet him. It feels good in my heart to be able to see the look on Dorothy's face now that I finally met her. And although Gibby says he could have taken the money, returning it was his only option. So I'm not no hero or anything like that. I just did the right thing, like I said, that I would want someone to do for me if I had lost $6,000. And I just thank God every day. Thank God for Gibby. And Dorothy says now that she and Gibby have met, their friendship will last a lifetime. I mean, you, you want to be able to open your doors in Arizona. Uh, with safety. That's exactly why John E. Tellian of Sun City Grand decided to have seven custom security doors fabricated for his home. After shopping around, John went with the company called Ortega's Iron Works, a business that actually makes security doors. We arrived at a price that seemed, it seemed right to me. He seemed like he was an enthusiastic, honest guy. The agreed upon price was $3,400 for all seven doors. To get the job started, John says he wrote out two checks for $2,200. The doors, he says, were supposed to be ready January 8th. No, on the 12th of January, he said, uh, I am behind and uh, it'll take me a couple of more weeks. Uh, I'll give you a discount. John says he became concerned, and on a recent visit to Ortega's Iron Works, he actually saw one of the doors that was being fabricated, and he didn't like what he saw. It was flimsy, and you could reach on the bars, and everything shook. Three on your side got involved, and after failing to get a hold of anyone over the phone at Ortega's Iron Works, three on your side dropped by the business, and we caught up with the owner, a guy by the name of Jose Ortega, who at first denied who he was. Okay. Are you Jose? What's your name? Excuse me? What's your Juan. name? Juan? Juan yeah. what? Why you want to know for? After driving off, he quickly returns and tells us he is actually Jose Ortega, the business owner, and he wants to talk to three on your side. Yeah. For take away that. Okay, well then, let's talk. Jose tells us he's trying to finish the doors he started, but claims John has made numerous changes to the original specs, and with each change, he falls behind. After I make the doors, right, after mm -hmm. we make the contract, mm -hmm. right, he mm -hmm. starts changing to all the stuff. I say, Jose, I want this solid bars. Jose, I want this bigger. Jose, I want all this grinder. Jose, I don't like the designs you make them you shop. Jose even took us into his shop and he showed us the original door he started making before all those changes were reportedly made. Yeah, this is the original one, the one that I make over here in the shop. And I make this one in December. And he comes over here and says, Jose, I don't like the design. Jose claims that with each change that is made, it's costing him time and money out of his pocket. I hired two people to work in that. The first time he said, no, I don't like the way this guy worked. And after that, I hired somebody else. I said, no, you better bring the other guy back because I don't like the way it is. Jose says because he's into the project for more than what he's charging, a refund is out of the question. Besides, he says all the doors are done except for being painted. But that just doesn't sit well with John. It says that it's, this is how it should be made, and if it's not made exactly this way, and I'm not satisfied in any way, I get my full refund. 